everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to Carver High School of Engineering and Science. I am the proud principal, Dr. Johnson. I am not here alone. I also have our amazing assistant principal, Ms. Liz Curry, as well as our Stepping Stones coordinator, Ms. Amanda Mazinoff. Uh, and we also have an amazing student, Ms. Jada is with us as well. Uh, Jada is one of our Carver students. And so uh, collectively, we hope to share with you as much as possible about our beautiful community and why you should go to Carver. Um, and what makes us unique and what makes us special as a community. Uh, just to start off, you know, who is Carver? Who are we as a school? What makes us special? Uh, I think the first thing that makes us special is that the idea about Carver is that we want our high school to feel like a college atmosphere. We, we essentially want a uh, high school to feel like college. And we operate our school in that banner. Uh, and so if you ever have a chance to kind of uh, stop by Carver, you know, right now we're, we're not allowing in-person uh, tours you know, but we're eventually working on that. In the meantime, if you're able to stop by, you'll see that we are actually a campus and, and intentionally so. Uh, we have three engineering rooms, we have four science labs, and we have a college design library and writing center, um, all designed to give us a college feel. Um, and so we're very keen on making sure that students that do arrive to Carver do have an opportunity to get to college. Our, our One of our number one goals is to make sure that we have a 100% uh, high school to college rate to a four-year college. And so that's one thing that we take pride in. We were able to make sure that 100% of our students did go to a four-year college last year. Uh, we anticipate doing that again in the future. And so we're proud of that. We take pride in that. And again, we're a seven to 12 school. Uh, at this time, we currently have 883 students that attend our school. And right now we will have plenty of space for our middle school, for our seventh and eighth grade. And we will be taking 200 students to come into our ninth grade. Uh, and so that's what we look like right now as a community. Now, let's get into the uh, curriculum, what makes us really special. You know, we are a STEM program. And so we really focus on math, engineering, sciences, and computer science, and biomedical. And so what we have are called pathways. And so what makes us really special, especially when you get into the high school experience, is that we've dedicated a lot of our honors and AP courses towards STEM programming and aligned them to other colleges and universities and their STEM programming as well. And so we were very intentional about making sure that we were a STEM focused school that focused on engineering, that focused on the medical field. So if your child is interested in STEM, um, any type of computer science, any type of medical field, any type of engineering, Carver is the school for you. Um, we're really heavily dedicated to that. Again, we have a, a special pathway with prerequisites that align just, just like college. And interestingly, when students do enroll and decide to come into our ninth grade uh, you know, uh, class, our ninth grade has the opportunity to do what we call a, um, an enrollment form. And so what they actually do is sign up for their courses for all four years. And so they actually create their pathway as they go through it, just like you would when you go to college. And so again, our, our goal was to make it feel as much like college as possible. Um, and so uh, there is a level of independence, there is a level of accountability, but there's also a strong level of support. And that's where I get to our amazing teachers. We have top of the line teachers here at Carver. We have a top of the line staff here at Carver. Uh, me being here as a first year principal, I get to see firsthand the amazing work that our staff and our teachers do here at our community here at the, at the school. Uh, and I'm proud of what we're doing here. And, and I think our numbers speak for themselves. Uh, I don't wanna talk too much. And so I, what I would like to do is, is shoot over to Ms. Amanda just to share a video with you uh, to give you perspective about how unique our school community is. So Ms. Amanda, could you share that video? Yes, of course. Sarah Almas. I am a senior and I'm a part of the graduating class of 2022. I'm currently in the courtyard. I am a part of National Honor Society and the girls soccer team. My favorite class that I took this year was AP US History. Hi, my name is Tolu Wani Mialalea. I'm a member of the class 2022 and I'm currently in our school's gym. I'm part of the National Honor Society and I play volleyball. My favorite AP class that I took this year would have to be AP Seminar. Hi, my name is Charity Robbins. I went to the class of 2023, and we are currently in Mr. Wagenhoff's first classroom. This is where students will learn about chemistry. Uh, I belong to the chess and robotics uh, club, and my favorite honors class is geometry honors. My name is Ray Tun. I'm in the class of 2022. I'm wearing an amazing cafeteria right now. This is where students will be enjoying their breakfast and lunch. This year, my favorite class was AP Physics. 
and this was my third year running for Sierra Altrilli Cell, and I joined our awesome National Honor Society. Hi, my name is Amir Hampton. I'm in the class of 2022. I'm currently in Hogan's classroom, and I'm a, I am run track and cross country. I'm part of Black Student Union. And my favorite class I've taken this year was hands down AP Chemistry. What's up, y'all? My name is Jared Tinsley. I'm in the graduating class of 2022. And I am here in Mr. Lee's room. And I have run cross country, indoor track, outdoor track, all three of my years here at Carver. And my favorite AP class I've taken this year is AP Chemistry. Hi, I'm Cameron West. I'm part of the graduating class of 2022. I am co chairwoman of the Black Student Union Education Committee and also part of the National Beta Club. My favorite course I've taken this past year was AP U.S. History. Hey, my name is Marcel. I'm part of the graduating class of 2022. I'm currently in one of the many computer labs that we have here at Carver, and I am a chairman for the Black Student Union's Economic Committee, and I'm a part of the swim team. My favorite class that I've taken this year is Computer Science Ed. Carver is inspiring, it's fulfilling, captivating, healthy, it's exhilarating, motivating, and encouraging. Carver students are selfless, are engaged, creative, are accepting, diligent, writing, intelligent. Carver teachers are very considerate, are talented, passionate, caring. Fun, compassionate, engaging. Carver makes me open minded and helps me think outside the box. Carver helps me reach my full potential in and out of the classroom. Helps me grow and meet people who share the same interests as me. Like my true interest in the world of engineering and science. To go to more compassionate relationships. Drive my ambitions and passions with all our readings on my career. Build meaningful, everlasting relationships and increases my interest in the study of cancer. Barbara makes me excited about integrating my interest in math and science into a future career. Barbara makes me excited about meshing community and law and my future endeavors of becoming an attorney. I'll use our STEM in the future to deepen our understanding of neuroscience. Using what I've learned in AP Biology to further my quest to become a pediatric oncologist. Students at Carver are fixed at home, build good relationships and connections with teachers. When they utilize all the resources here. We work together and help each other out. When they branch out and explore the extracurricular activities. When they utilize the beautiful community that we have here. Carver prepared me for my future by showing me where I belong and how to find my comfort zone and also my limits. By giving us a variety of programs and activities to explore my interests and find what I'm really passionate about. By motivating me to be the best version of myself. By allowing me to connect with my people, its culture, and our allies through the BSU. By bringing opportunities to meet with college admissions and career oriented panels. Or by allowing me to enroll in a variety of AP classes so I'm ready for college school courses. By providing me with resources that broaden my view on the college process and how it works. They're by connecting me with programs to help me achieve success as a first generation college student. Parker is family. So uh, thank you, Ms. Amanda. This is just an example of how amazing our students are. Our students created this video. You know, we have some talented, amazing students. And I think the important part for us is to make sure that we empower our students to just express their brilliance. Um, as a principal, one of the things that I believe is that passion plus service equals purpose. If we can find ways for students to find their passion and curve them to serve people, they'll ultimately find their purpose. And that's what we try to do here at Carver. Uh, and so we have a lot of things in place um, as you can see, the students share their, their passions for their favorite class and also their passions for their favorite clubs. I'm proud to say that we have well over 30 clubs here. That doesn't even include sports. 30 clubs and after-school activities that students can engage in uh, that they're passionate about and that they can even create 
Uh, we want to create a space where students can create things. Uh, in addition to that, it's also important that um, students have access to sports. So we have all the sports. Um, we have students run Philly style. We have cross country, we have track, basketball, football, girls basketball, uh, girls um, soccer, boys soccer, JV, varsity. We have all of those things. Um, and so again, it's important for us to make sure that we give students the full opportunity. In addition to their classes, they also have a study hall. Again, we're trying to make it very similar to the college atmosphere. So students do have space for study hall and we have something called a senior seminar, where it's geared to making sure that students are well prepared in order um, for post-secondary success. All right, and so again, when we talk about what type of classes and courses that students take, uh, we don't follow a block schedule. We have eight, um, eight periods in a day. The reason being because we have such a large course selection. We have 22 honors courses and, eight, and 18 AP courses that lead to college credits. In addition to that, we also provide dual enrollment and we have a lot of partners with colleges and universities. So I'm gonna ask this Miss Amanda to just speak more towards about our college partnerships that we have with different colleges and universities. Miss Amanda. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Hi everyone, just reintroducing myself. My name is Amanda Maisonave and I am from Stepping Stone Scholars. Um, my role at Carver is to help increase college access and equity. And we have a number of partnerships with universities across the city, across the state, so that students are able to not only take dual enrollment courses or you know, earn free college credits while they're in high school, but also participate in a number of enrichment programs that the universities, universities offer. So for example, um, you know, we've worked with Temple, Drexel, Penn, Westchester, Villanova, CCP, you know, you name it. We, uh, we also have an embedded dual enrollment course right now from the University of Sciences offered, uh, it's a data science course. So we're constantly looking for opportunities that our students can, can have to build their resumes, get to know what careers and college majors they might be interested in, and then support them throughout that process. Thank you, Miss Amanda. What I would like to put in the chat is just our student handbook, just to give you an idea of who we are as a community now. Um, there are a lot of pages, but I want to just be informative, as informative as possible uh, with you all as far as who we are. You can also find our student handbook and our website. Our handbook also identifies all of our course selections and all the three pathways that I talked to you about, the three STEM pathways. I think someone just asked about that. That can also be found in our staff in our student handbook. In addition to that, I'm also going to provide the 18 AP courses that we provide as well, just to make sure that you all have all that information. Um, you know, that's pretty much who we are as a school. Um, we try to operate as a community, but we're a family as well. Um, we're very inclusive, but we make sure that students have every opportunity to be successful. Again, our formula is to create the passion, allow them to serve, and ultimately find their purpose and make sure they can successfully matriculate to post-secondary success. And that's who we are as a community. Now, Let's get into the admissions process. Uh, I think that's the uh, that's the elephant in the room. Um, our our admissions process has significantly changed uh, due to, from previous years. Uh, this year, our admissions process will focus more on uh, the district is trying to align to create a more equitable process uh, for admissions. And so, what that will look like, from what we have gathered thus far, is that the school selection uh, is open right now, and so you can apply to Carver at this very moment. Uh, once you apply to Carver, there are certain criteria that you have to achieve in order to make it into Carver. The first piece is to maintain A's and B's for at least uh, one of the last two years. And so we'll be looking at the um, school year of 2020, 2021, and 2019-2020. All right, they'll be looking at those two years and your grades from there. The expectation our students are maintaining A's and B's during that time. In addition to that, they'll be also looking at attendance. And so we're, we're looking at 90 to 95% attendance during those two years. And so those are the main things that they will look like look at. Once that, um, once that school selection period has ended on November the 21st, there will also be a new uh, emphasis on what we call a writing sample assessment. That writing sample assessment will be uh, done by a vendor from the School District of Philadelphia. Students will have an opportunity to go to a testing site uh, to receive one prompt. The prompt can last up to 60 or 90 minutes. That's how much time is given. It probably won't take that much time, but students will be given plenty of time to create uh, this writing sample and also be provided with a rubric on how that writing sample will be graded. Based on the grade of that writing sample, uh, students will be selected to enter a lottery. 
so again, the, the idea is the number one, hit the first two criteria of the A's and B's in those two years, and then hit the 95% attendance. Once you do that, you get this writing sample. Based on the grade of that writing sample, students enter a lottery. And then based on that lottery, we receive the list of students who can enter Carver. And so right now, that is the, the logistics and process of what that admissions looks like. Um, there's a lot of things as far as logistics and windows. We haven't been giving a date of when the writing samples will take place. We haven't been given a, a location of where it will take place. I believe the district is still underway and having discussions on what that will look like and working with the vendor uh, to get more of an idea of what the uh, writing sample will look like. What I do know is that I believe that families will get the rubric ahead of time so they'll know how the writing samples will be graded prior to taking the writing sample. Um, and so that that is what the admissions pro, uh, process will look like. And so at this time, uh, I I believe we have one of our students on. Is Jada on? All right, excellent. And so what I also what I always like to do is one thing to hear from the principal because I'm always going to say amazing things about my school. Um, but it's another thing for to hear from an actual student who who's actually in this, in our space right now, um, despite COVID, despite all these things and and is able to give you a perfect example of what it's like to be a student at Carver. So Jada, um, Jada, I'm going to ask that you come off of mute and just talk to us. I have two questions for you, Jada. Number one, you know, um, what's your favorite class? All right. And what do you love about being at Carver? Um, hi, everybody. My name is Jada. Let me just introduce myself. Um, yeah. I'm a student here at Carver and um, currently I am in my junior year. So that's 11th grade. And um, yeah, I love my school so much. And when I was in middle school, I remember I applied to a lot of high schools. I actually went to middle school at Carver. I've been there since seventh grade. And um, I applied to a lot of high schools. And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to stick with Carver because it's just, it's like a family. Like you, everyone really knows everyone. Like I didn't, I didn't want to go to a school where it was too big. And, you know, I didn't really have any like um, adult to talk to. So I wanted to uh, have that connection with my teachers and my counselors and whatnot. Um, but uh, regards to the questions, my favorite subject right now is actually um, AP Calc, BC. I'm like, I'm good at math. <laughs> so that just happens to be my favorite subject. And um, uh, I, I just love Carver, not only because of the people around me, just because of the things, opportunities that you get, because right now I'm actually on the girls soccer team. Well, the season just ended, <laughs> but I'm on the girls soccer team and it's a really good team. If you guys are thinking of joining sports, it's amazing or any clubs. I know there's a lot of clubs. Um, I have friends in anime club, robotics, robotics. There's also like quiz bowl. If you guys know just a bunch of random facts and you want to answer stuff, there's quiz bowl and just like, um, there's like a bunch and there's also national honor society. So that's great for everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and if you have any questions, just like be sure to drop them in the chat and I'll answer them. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine, I do have an additional question for you just so that folks can, can understand. You know, this year is different. You know, we're experiencing COVID-19 and uh, a lot of schools, you know, a lot of students don't feel safe in their schools and a lot of students have concerns around what it's like to go to school since we've been back from this pandemic. What has it been like for you coming back from the pandemic to back into in-person learning here at Carver? <laughs> um, for uh, for me, uh, well, uh, so in-person learning for me was, uh, it was more kind of difficult than it was easier because yeah, you know, you get to stay in your bed and <laughs> you get to like just stay at home with, <laughs> you know, with like your bed. <laughs> That's pretty much all I did. But um, what you like, what you get is you were try, like trying to learn top topics by yourself. So it's just like, you didn't have that in-person connection. You couldn't really connect to your peers because you were just staring at like, like just a computer screen and it would hurt your eyes because the screen really does hurt your eyes. Like if you stare at it for a really long time, but um, Carver tried to not make it that hard on us. Like we will get breaks, we'll get a lot of breaks. So, and we will get like, my our teachers would like encourage us to go on walks. But um, now coming back in person, it's really safe. We always have our masks and we do um, forms wherever we're going for at lunch. We do, we have a QR code and we scan that QR code to see, oh, um, who are you sitting, like, what table are you sitting at? Where are you located? And it basically, that's important for contact tracing. So if you came, like, in close contact with a person who have came in close contact with another person with, like, um, COVID-19, then you're sent home or you have to 
show a proof of the uh, vaccination card or stuff like that. It's really safe. There's also hand sanitizer stations like set up all throughout the hallways. So there's, and they're always filled. Like I try them every single day. They're always, <laughs> they're always filled with hand sanitizer. So, uh, <laughs> and also like uh, if the teachers, if you, if you need a mask break, because sometimes masks are hard to read through, especially if you like have asthma and you're running up all those stairs, like sometimes it's hard. So you can have a mask break if you want, just pull it down real quick and then just breathe and then pull it back up. Um, and the transition is, it was, it wasn't uh, that hard because the teachers are making sure you're comfortable. They're making sure you're okay. They're checking up on you. And also like with the workload, it's not also that difficult because, you know, we get breaks and they give us time to work on stuff that we have, like if we have time and they talk to us about how we feel. Cause I remember um, last week, my APUSH teacher was actually talking. She was like, how do you guys feel right now? Are you guys okay? What do you guys want to do? Like she was asking us how we felt instead of just cramming all this work on us, which is really important. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, and just and just to add to that, you know, one of my priorities just opening the year was just to make sure students were OK, uh, just to make sure that we were in a safe space to actually begin instruction, um, because I believe that's where it starts. You have to make sure people are OK, uh, staff and students before we just go right into instruction. So uh, thank you for sharing that, uh, Jasmine. I see there's some questions. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is introduce our AP. Uh, Ms. Curry, are you still there? If not, that's okay. That's okay. Right. I'm still here. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. I was looking All in right. the chat, so I had to get back to the screen. Yes. No worries. No worries. So I just wanted to introduce Ms. Curry, our AP. So, Ms. Curry, you can introduce yourself. And then, uh, if there's any questions, maybe you can cover the questions. Are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. How are you? I just, <laughs> um, I hope everyone is doing well, and we're really excited to have all of our potential students on the line. And I'm going to get started on reading the questions. Are you ready? So the first one dealt with um, is AP Calc BC a standalone course, or is it offered after students complete AP Calc AB? That's a great question. And so it's a prerequisite. And so you, in order to get into uh, Calc BC, you have to pass uh, Calc AB. Okay. Thank you. Is there a speech or debate team and debate team? So we're working on that. We just developed a youth court uh, and the students have been requesting a youth debate team. Uh, we've had debate teams in the past, but those are subject to whether the teacher is available to coach it. Uh, and so we're actually in a process of working with a partnership uh, to bring the debate team back to Carver. So we're looking to have that very soon. Perfect. Secondly, how many kids are in the ninth grade class um, and how many kids typically continue from middle school to high school? It's a great question. And so that's, a, that's a, the second part of that question is what we're working on. But we typically have about 200 kids uh, in, that, in that ninth grade class. We usually have 200 students. Um, how many students typically transition from middle to high school? Mostly all of them. We try to we try to create a safe transition. That's part of the reason why we created a middle school here um, to make sure that we created an effective transition from middle school to high school. Um, I believe that's one of the most important transitions in education. And so what we like to do is make sure students in our middle school meet that criteria so that we can keep them for ninth grade. Uh, but for the most part, most of our students do transition to the high school. Um. What is the limit of students per classroom and what's the ratio of air purifiers to children? Um, our, our classrooms, depending on uh, the, you know, the topic, you know, you know, we're a STEM program. So most of our students are in STEM classrooms. Our regular classrooms usually run between 25 to 28 students in a class. Um, but our engineering and STEM program classes usually run between 28 to 33 students a class. Um, we have one air purifier in every class. Air purifiers are not necessarily determined by the number of people in a room, but the, not, but the amount of space in the room. Uh, and so we have one purifier for every classroom. Uh, we Additionally, we have them in the cafeteria, the auditorium, the gym, and um, all of the larger rooms, that, such as the commons in 145. Um, we have the appropriate sized uh, air purifier for those. Um, how will we be informed of the writing prompt? Uh, you should hear something from the district very soon. Again, they're, they're still trying to work on what that looks like to be very transparent with you. Um, they haven't identified 
you know, what that process will look like in detail and what the expectations are going to be as far as the grading. I think they're having that con those conversations as we speak. Um, this is also a question I think you just answered about um, we're not sure of what the minimum score is on the writing assessment. The district will uh, send that out um, as part of their requirement. Uh, the next one is of the 200 spots in the ninth grade class, how many are new admits? Well, right now we currently have about uh, 60 to 70 students in eighth grade. And so if even if all of them were to transition into the high school, you would have a good 120 spots left. Um, and that's if those students choose to go to our high school. Some of them may apply to other high schools as well. So, you know, we have a good amount of space for our ninth grade class coming in. Thank you. Um, how many students are in um, an eighth grade class? I'm not sure if that means the entire enrollment or per classroom, but maybe entire enrollment. Yeah, so we have, uh, uh, typically we try to keep about 60 to 65 uh, students in seventh grade and about 65 to 70 students in eighth grade. Thank you. Um, the next question and comment is, the STEM curriculum looks impressive. Would you talk about the approach to English, social studies, foreign languages, and other subjects outside of STEM? Absolutely. And so that's part of the process. When you first come into ninth grade, uh, you have to take your foundational courses, just like college. Like in college, there are certain levels that you take as prerequisites before you can go into other courses. And so, for example, many of our students like psychology, but in order to start psychology, you have to take English one and two. And so it's, a lot of students have to take foundational courses uh, that also align with the district's requirements before they can go into their pathway. And we try to have those conversations earlier in the year and carve out what their pathway can look like well in advance so students know exactly where they're going and what it takes to get there. And um, I would say that, yes, uh, we have a very strong STEM program, um, but in terms of other subjects and other offerings, uh, we do have art, um, dance. Uh, we pro try to pro provide various electives to students that um, options. Um, so the next question is, what makes Carver different as an engineering and science school. All right, I think you're breaking up, Miss uh, Miss Carver. What happened for you? Yeah, it's no problem. It said, "What makes Carver uh, different as an engineering and science high school?" Um, I think that our partnerships make us different. I think our relationships ultimately make us different. I think at, at the end of the day, you know, um, teaching is, is not a transactional relationship. This is it's a transformational relationship, right? And so it's one thing to just teach you engineering and math, but I think the relationships that we uh, develop, not only with our teachers, but with our alumni. We have one of the strongest alumni that I've ever seen in my short time here at Engineering and Science. Uh, we have an organization, organization called Friends of Carver, uh, many of them who work at colleges and universities that can provide our students with jobs and opportunities. Um, and so I think there's a there's a lot of opportunities and networking abilities uh, joining Carver's engineering and STEM programming. Uh, and again, to, to what Miss Amanda shared earlier, uh, we have an extensive strong partnership with colleges and universities based on our STEM program. So I think that's kind of what separates us. Can you hear me now? Yep, I hear you. Sound like the commercial? Okay. Um, we are very close to Temple University. You listed several college uh, universities with whom we have a relationship. Um, do we have a special relationship with Temple uh, due to its proximity? That's probably one of our strongest relationships, to be honest with you. Um, we have a lot of partnerships with Temple. Um, we have a Temple SOAR program, which is a summer STEM program that we have for students. Um, and we have a lot, and Miss Amanda, am I missing anything? There's, I know there's a lot of partnerships that we have with Temple. Sure, yeah, so I can I can add to that. We also have, um, there is a dual enrollment program with Temple called the Before You Soar program, where students can take a free college course at Temple in the fall or the spring, and they'll get those credits totally for free. We also have the Upward Bound program that students can enroll in uh, in ninth and 10th grade that provides everything from workshops on college and career readiness to additional dual enrollment courses um, and all kinds of enrichment opportunities. 
So uh, we're also working with Temple right now to create a mentorship program. And uh, Jada, I see your hand raised. Did you want to add something about, about Temple? Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities at Temple for students. Um, currently, you can actually do dual enrollment. They're offering classes there, but um, I'm doing dual enrollment at Community College of uh, Philadelphia because that's actually also very close to our school. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities when it comes to colleges. And also um, their Temple has like internships that you can apply for and Oh, hello, can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, we have internships that Temple offer because uh, for example, I know there's a bioethics one that I'll, I'll be going to. <laughs> and um, um, also a number of my other friends are also in this program with Temple and it's, not, it's just once a week until February. So, which is really cool. Excellent. Are there any more questions? There are. Um, so if a student uh, has an IEP, um, we, we do have a special ed uh, liaison who is able to um, oversee any students that need specialized services and all of our teachers um, are able to support students as well. Uh, the next question is, is the expectation that every student takes AP classes or can? And so the, uh, the question was, the question was, uh, is the expectation that every student take AP classes or can one take honors instead? Um, that's a conversation that we have with the student and the family. Uh, we don't put students in classes that they're not prepared for. Students have to test into certain classes. And so, for example, uh, students have to test well in order to get into an AP course, uh, very similar to an honors course. And so we, ought, we, we do look at PSSAs uh, for students who are looking to get into uh, honors classes in ninth grade or AP classes. Uh, they have to test into that. And so we don't just place students in that, even if they ask for it. Um, they have to show and, and, and show evidence that they're prepared uh, to take that coursework. Thank you. All right, the, um, yeah, I'll start reading them, Ms. Curry, just to help you, uh, just to make sure we get through it. That's okay. Thank All you. right, no problem. Uh, does, does Carver require a letter of recommendation? Uh, the only thing Carver requires is the, the application. And so if, if there's a recommendation on the application, then we're, then we're gonna request that. But right now, um, at this time, you just have to complete that application. All right, and then you'll have that writing sample. All right, those, those are the only things that are required at this time. From prior years, what is your average number of applicants for ninth grade? Um, and so this is my first year as principal here, um, but from what I was told from the previous principal, we had about 3,000, uh, 3,000 that applied last year. Okay, um, usually when we, um, when we break it down, we break it down to about uh, seven to 800. Um, seven, eight hundred that actually enter the lottery. All right. And then from that lottery, we get the 200. And so that's that's how that usually works. OK, where do the sports team practice? That's a great question. Um, we are actually working to see if we can get a partnership with Temple to use Temple's practice field. We, we can't practice at Temple right now, though. And so we have a, a couple of different super sites where we practice. There's a super site at 22nd and Cecil B. Moore uh, where we practice for soccer uh, and baseball and um, a couple other sports. Um, we do have a basketball gym, so we do practice in the gym for basketball and volleyball that we do practice at in-house. But for outdoor sports like baseball and things like that, we practice at 22nd and Cecil B. Moore super site. Okay. Uh, if a student had already started the ninth grade year in a, wait, I just lost it, hold on. If a student had already started the ninth grade year in a different school and wanted to transfer, would you look at their current transcript or would you still be interested in the previous grade? The district requires that we look at the previous grade. All right, and so we, we have to look at those previous grades for the first two years, all right? Uh, thank you, Jade, I see you in there adding comments. Okay, what is dual enrollment? Good question. Miss Amanda, did you wanna answer that one? 
Sure, and actually it looks like another one of our students, Deja, also gave a great answer. So long story short, it is a chance for you to take a college course while you're enrolled in high school for free. So you will earn college credits while you're in high school and be able to transfer those credits to um, you know, a four-year institution that you choose to go to after high school. Hi, Deja. I didn't even know you were on here. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, is there anything that you wanted to share? I was, uh, I, Jada shared some things earlier. Anything you want to share to folks about your experiences at Carver? Um, Carver is just a great place. Like Jada said, I've been at Carver since seventh grade and like the transition from elementary school to middle school and then high school was just like, like the teachers, the staff, they comforted me so well and I felt like I was already made at Carver and I don't know, it's just so welcoming. So yeah, you should definitely go to Carver. <laughs> uh, yes, languages we offer are Spanish and Chinese. Uh, we offer three years of Spanish and three years of Chinese. So we do uh, Spanish one, two, and then AP Spanish. And then we do Chinese one, two, and then AP Chinese. All right. I believe we tackled everything here. Unless questions are. And just shout out to the students answering questions. Thank you, Jada and Deja. Got some amazing students. Okay. All right, folks, if there's no questions, uh, again, I definitely encourage folks to please check our website. Check our website every day. We post everything that our students do. If our students create a video, we're posting it. Um, also, feel free to check our Instagram page. It's official, uh, Carver HSES. Um, check us on Instagram, check us on Facebook, uh, check us out on uh, our website. Uh, we like to show off what our amazing students are doing. So um, again, thank you, Deja. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jada. Uh, thank you, Miss Amanda. Thank you, Miss Curry. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we hope that you all have the opportunity to join us and experience what we're doing over here at Carver. And uh, feel free to reach out. I will leave my email address for folks who need to reach out to me. Uh, if you would like a recording of this video, please just feel free, feel free to email me and request it. And I'll be more than happy to send it off to you. Okay, so this is my email address here. And then uh, I can shoot it to you. All right, sound good? All right, folks, uh, thank you for taking the time. I hope you all have an amazing day, amazing evening. Be safe, and I'll talk to you soon.